Uh, so I'll just uh, right away start with it. Yes, we do need to exercise whether we are diabetic or non-diabetic. And as a physician or as a, uh, everyone practicing endocrinology or the diabetes, this uh, is very important. We do write a prescription about it. We have seen this slide uh, for the whole day, I think. So how important uh, of this diabetes as uh, the prevalence is it can be taken into account that we are having a whole day of the three day conference we are to totally having a full day on diabetes today so coming to the crux of the management it is a triad where we talk about the nutrition which will be covered in the subsequent day uh, day lecture the medications we are definitely talking in the exercise and the, the, the center, we say, is the education which we are doing, which everyone has to do. So this uh, needs to be taught. So it, this exercise is an important therapeutic regimen for diabetes mellitus. We are very well aware about the cardiovascular benefit, the weight management, and the glycemic control it gives. The basic benefit appears due to the tissue sensitivity to the insulin, which produces a beneficial effect on the glycemic control. A UK-based study in 2004, 2004 studied in both the type of diabetes that only 34% took some form of activity and 9% of those also didn't achieve the target. So you see, we are talking about diabetic patients, where we give prescription, where we say, yet we are not talking about the non-diabetic uh, scenario. Define, to define the physical activity, it is bodily movements produced by skeletal muscles that results in energy expenditure. But when we talk about an exercise, it's a subset of physical activity that is planned, structured, repeated, and as a final or intermediate objective to improvement or maintenance of physical fitness. In diabetes, there is a situation of insulin resistance, moreover in type 2, which is exacerbated by our bad lifestyle and sedentary lifestyle. So if we uh, see the longest studies of diabetes prevention program and Darwin study of China, this has shown that weight loss brought about by the dietary restriction and physical exercise decreased the development of type 2 diabetes among obese patients people with impaired glucose tolerance. So this is very important. Exercise is one of the major pillars in diabetes management and if done properly as advised, will immensely benefit diabetics. Talking about the various benefits from uh, the decrease in the mortality to lowering the risk of metabolic syndrome, to reduction in the incidence of osteoarthritis, to the reduction in falls in older adult and mental well-being. It is also shown uh, having a beneficial effect in lowering risk of breast cancer and colonic cancers. But word about the sedentary behavior increasing the diabetic risk. So any waking sedentary behavior where the energy expenditure is less than 1.5 metabolic equivalents, whether you are sitting, reclining, watching a TV or have been sitting for a very prolonged period. This we actually label the amount or the energy expenditure in the metabolic equivalents. Anything between around 3 MET, we'll take it as mild exercise, mild uh, adv advocation of exercise. Moderate comes around to 3 to 6 and more than 6 metabolic equivalents if the energy expenditure is there, we say it is a vigorous exercise. So the studies have shown one hour of ex extra TV, you say, uh, the children are seeing TV, we are put, uh, sitting on a mobile and laptop, we are actually increasing a risk of 22% for type 2 diabetes. In any uh, less than what, two and a half hours of exercise or sitting, prolonged sitting, will actually increase our energy expenditure of around 350 cal calories per day. So the non-exercise activity thermogenesis is important for the prevention of obesity. So studies have shown that eight weeks duration of exercise or a structured exercise will reduce the A1C by 0.66% in diabetes. This has been recommended by the American Diabetic Association also that at least after every 30 minutes of a regular setting, we should have some disrupted activity, interrupted activity. I like to, we have been sitting for a, an hour over this laptop, we should get up, stretch ourselves. And actually, uh, this will benefit the diabetic patient. 
So having some evidence, we're living in the evidence-based era. So we'll have, we have the follow-up epidemiological studies uh, where proper diet along with exercise has shown to be useful not only in diabetes, but other non-communicable disease. The Darkwing study in China, which was a six years follow-up study, which showed 31% patient uh, improved with diet only when the prescription was there and 46% when exercise and on the combination, an average of 42 patients were improved. The diabetes prevention program, which has been one of the longest 10-year follow-up program, which showed the incidence of diabetes after randomization was reduced to 34% and 18% in subjects initially randomized to lifestyle and metformin intervention. There have been various data from Japan, from Germany, which has shown the leisure time physical activity, the habitual time physical activity has reduced the incidence of diabetes and comorbid uh, and the complication and the comorbid uh, conditions. So the physical activity definitely is important, more so for diabetics. How do so it affects? The acute effect, if you see, by the stimulation or uh, by the insulin stimulation of the blood glucose attack in the skeletal muscle. Also, simple mild intensity of 15 minute post meal walk can be considered at a moderate aerobic exercise, and that has shown to be improved in the blood glucose levels. The aerobic and the resistance exercise training both has shown to be effective, and this physical activeness lasts from two to 72 hours. So. If you don't exercise regularly, the beneficial effect goes. On longer runs, if you're daily exercising on most of the days, this, this beneficial effect of, of, on blood glucose can be uh, seen with moreover on the various metabolic profile and all-cause mortality and even having a mental well-being. Hence, the effect of the exercise manifested by improved insulin sensitivity decreases within three days after exercise and almost no longer apparent after one week. Therefore, diabetes patients should engage in physical exercise at least three days per week with no more than two consecutive days between bouts of physical activity. So this was one of the, uh, I was talking about the mid-intensity post-meal walking and effective for glucose homeostasis in type 2 diabetes patients. So some exercises is essential. Talking upon high, hyper-intensity exercise, so there is a modest improvement in the medical, medical metabolic control if we talk for the diabetes as per se to other forms of exercise training, and it should not be overstated for its role in weight loss, but definitely because of its cardiovascular benefit and a cardiorespiratory benefit, the, it has been inculcated in the uh, schedule of the uh, program for diabetes. Not only uh, diabetes and exercise essential for everyone, but also during pregnancy. The maternal benefits are irrespective of diabetes, but specifically if a, pa if a patient, a diabetic pregnant patient exercises, it decreases the number of women who required insulin, shorter labor and decreased incidence of operative delivery and definitely reduce fat mass in, uh, and in the fetal health benefits. So there was one of the study which was mentioned, what Exactly why we, we talk doesn't accumulate into in practice. So this was one of the problems related to exercise therapy guidelines. So if you see, there is lack of time to teach. As I said, we are very busy. Everyone is very busy. We don't charge extra. There is definitely exercise educators, which is, this is very significant. We do, we have diet educators, but there are very few people who, who are uh, specializing in exercise education. Lack of any guidebooks uh, for exercise therapy. Patients do not practice exercise even after instruction. And lack of facilities and possibility of the fear, especially type 1 patient. Because of exercise, their blood glucose level may fluctuate. As we know, the Arabic exercise, once you begin, the chances of hypoglycemia is more. And during the strenuous exercise, the, the resistance exercises, because of the increase in the cachecola means, there is chances of hyperglycemia. So the patient fear may also be there. And the chances of getting prone to injuries may also be there in the back of their mind. So now what can we do? We have seen the problem. 
So we need to regular exercise. We are very well about aware about that, uh, the schedule of exercise. So what type of now we have decided that exercise is essential. We will, shall prescribe it to our patient. But what has to be prescribed? What type has to be there? How much has to be there? Certain tips to start over. Anything which you enjoy, you will do it for a longer period of time. Have some group or a partner which will definitely help you to uh, do it on a longer duration of time. Start slowly, and uh, the importance is a warming up session of five to ten minutes and a cool down session uh, after it. Drink adequate amount of water. Ensure a proper footwear. Do have an identification card because you are a diabetic. Chances of hypoglycemia should be made aware of the uh, the partners you are exercising with. Always carry some snack or some carbohydrate food. Do not exercise. We have told you sick days. We should skip exercises or the chances of the blood or the blood glucose is high or the ketoses are there. We should refrain from exercising. So start slowly. Time it right. Know your limits. Do test your sugar pre-exercise and post-exercise. Take measures to protect your eyes and feet, and be prepared. We'll be talking about the precautions for exercising in both the type diabetes. All the patient, elderly patient, patients of a longer duration of diabetes or, or the complication of diabetes should have an exercise tolerance test done before initiating. Uh, any exercise and they should uh, have what type of exercise they should do. Specifically, the retinopathy patients, specifically severe NPDR and PDR, uh, the non-proliferative and the proliferative diabetic retinopathy. The, some exercises, especially the strenuous exercises, may risk the chances of vitreous hemorrhage. Uh, for the peripheral neuropathy, though most of the exercises can be done, but recommendations are for the non-weight bearing exercise. The moderate intensity walking may not lead to increased risk of foot ulcer or ulceration, re-ulceration in peripheral neuropathy. The ADA guidelines for the physical activity considers various complications which a diabetic patient ensues. And you see most of the cardiac complications they uh, recommend uh, once after the testing if they, if they are capable of uh, uh, supervised structured exercise program, they should do so, start slowly, start gradually. Most of the aerobic exercises and some of the uh, uh, moderate intensity exercises can be done. A word about the neuropathic patients, the weight bearing exercise that we have discussed should be done with proper foot care. The foot patients who have foot ulcer or amputation should avoid weight bearing exercise and should monitor their feet daily. Patients with autonomic neuropathy should have maybe a challenge because they may have chances, uh, more chances of having partial hypotension. So some of the exercises should be restricted to them and uh, symptom, symptom limited exercises should be there and they should avoid exercises in hot environment and hydrate well. Eye diseases, as we have said, because of the chances of vitreous hemorrhage, the very high, very uh, vigorous exercises should be avoided in PDR and non-PDR patients. The kidney disorders doesn't uh, refute patients to, uh, to have all most of the exercises or activities are okay. So if we see a mnemonic, what type of exercise? Strengthening exercises, aerobic exercises, flexibility exercises, endurance exercises should be added. So safe exercises are there, which can be recommended to most of the group of the patients which you are seeing in your OPD. Talking on the type of exercises, this can be breathing exercises, which are part of very well part of yoga and is now incorporated into our structured exercise program. Aerobic exercises can be walking, which can be 30 minutes, gradually can be increased to 60 minutes. Newer guidelines incorporating more than uh, like uh, 30 minutes is advocated. But studies have shown that around 60 minutes of exercise have a beneficial effect. Jogging, swimming and static bicycling may be a good choice for aerobic exercises. Not only that, we should mix and match with the uh, 20 to 30 minute of strength training exercise using push-ups, sit-ups, lunges, squats or dumbbells should be uh, uh, intermixed with your aerobic exercises. Stretching exercises maintains the flexibility of joint and the muscles of the body. 
balancing exercises and the uh, foot exercises also may be helpful. We are very well aware now we are living in a technology world where every apps are available, the exercising app, apps are available, the, uh, the watches are available. So you can actually track down how much you have exercised, uh, you have done the exercise, how much calories you have spent, and that depends upon the age of the patients. Role of yoga in diabetics. Now, it is a promising adjuvant for diabetes management along with exercise. And I have a better metabolic prof, uh, profile and a me better mental health also. So, various asanas has been advocated which can be practiced in diabetics. So, evidence about it, the exercise prescription. These are various guidelines which talk about the type, mode, duration, intensity and frequency of exercise. A word about the type 1 diabetics is the recent guideline from the ICMR in 2022 uh, uh, by our, uh, our own ICMR, which recommends a regular monitoring of pre-blood glucose, uh, uh, blood glucose prior and after the exercise, depending upon the intensity and duration of exercise, regulation of dose of insulin, the basal and the bolus, according to the exercise, this can be done. And not only that, the insulin requirement can be influenced by the amount of type of food consumed. And sometimes if the blood glucose are lower, the, uh, the carbohydrate uh, can, be, uh, can be given along with the exercise. Talking on type 2 diabetes, 60 Madam, minutes. Uh, the time is almost up, ma'am. Uh, yeah, can you? Just, uh, winding up. So we Thank recommend 30 to uh, 60 minutes for type 1, 150 minutes spread over in a week along with mix and match of exercise, this RSSDI 2022, this will be the guideline which will be declared. So we are not uh, talking about steps, amount of exercise. Uh, so just to write a prescription, I think this will do. Frequency, you have to do three to five times. Intensity, one, your heart rate rises up to 120 beats minutes or you don't get breathless. Timing, the type, and it should be enjoyable. So. My take-home message will definitely be exercise regularly uh, and with specific precaution should be advised to the comorbidities. Yoga is an adjuvant. Some of the useful tips for the patients uh, when they exercise. Thank you.